Hello students, welcome to ePathsala. I am Ariyar Sudan, Department of Textile Technology, Kumaruru College of Technology, Koyamathur. I am going to handle the coloration of textiles in this session. At the end of this session, we are going to learn about the uh, types of uh, colorations involved in the fiber, fabric and other textile materials. So, in this session, you are uh, learn how the dyes are formed into the fiber, fib fabric and textile materials. So, in this reactions, you are going to uh, learn chemical bonding with respect to the fiber dyes and also the uh, how the colors are formed in the textile material based on the light reflections and other types of uh, natural and artificial lights. So, the lights are uh, varying the intensity based on the color sensations. So, basically the humans are experienced based on the uh, light uh, reflection with respect to the vivid nature of the colors. Light and color, color sensation is a characteristic of human experience. Nature provides a particularly vivid display of color. We use colors in many varied ways. For example, cloths, paints, hoods, lighting, cosmetics, paper, furnishing and for identification and security. Despite our familiarity with it, there is a no simple answer to the questions. What is color and how do we see it? We understand so very little of the complex processes involved in color vision. There are three main stages in the perception of color, but each one consists of numerous complicated processes. Absorption of colored light entering the eye by the sensitive cells in the retina lining the back of the eyeball. Transmission of nerves impulses from the retina to the brain via the optic nerves. Interpretation of the, these signals when they reach the visual cortex in the brain. To understand color, some knowledge of the nature of light is essential. Light is a form of energy usually considered as being propagated at high speed in the form of electromagnetic waves. All types of electromagnetic radiation are characterized by the wavelength or by the frequency. The wavelength multiplied by the frequency gives the speed of wave propagation. This is always constant in a given medium. The human eye can detect electromagnetic waves with wavelengths in a narrow range between the 400 and 700 nanometer, comprising what we call visible light. We are also familiar with X-rays, ultraviolet rays, infrared rays and micro and radio waves, whose wavelength vary by many orders of magnitude. Spectral analysis of daylight or white light using a prism, for example, separates it into various colored light as seen in the rainbow. The red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet spectral colors of the rainbow corresponds to lights with wavelengths of about 650, 600, 575, 525, 460 and 420 nanometer respectively. Basics of color, unlike most organic compounds, dyes possesses color because they absorb light in the visible spectrum like 400 to 700 nanometer have at least one chromophore color bearing groups, have a conjugated systems that is a structure with alternating double and single bonds and exhibit resonance of electrons which is stabilizing force in organic compounds. When any one of these features is lacking from the molecular structure, the color is lost. In addition to chromophores, most dyes also contain groups known as oxochrome that is color helpers, example of which are carboxy acid, sulfonic acid, amino and hydroxyl groups. While these are not responsible for color, their presence can shift the color of a colorant and they are most often used to influence dye solubility. Classification of dyes. There are basically two ways of classifying various dye stuffs based on applications and based on chemical constituents. In general, the dye stuff is coloring matter. The application wise classification of dye stuff is more important from a practical point of view and is dye stuff is uh, classified into synthetic dyes so based on the water soluble and the insoluble nature. So, water soluble nature are direct dyes, reactive dyes, acid dyes, basic dyes, optical whiteners and insoluble dyes are wet dyes, sulfur dyes, dispersed dyes. Other than synthetic dyes, natural dyes so with res extracting from the nature, herb and the trees. Other one is ingrained dyes like azoic dyes, oxidation colors and mineral colors. 
So, other coloring matter is pigments. So, pigments also is coming under the word azoic and mineral and pathocyanic agents. Chemistry of dyes and pigments. Dyes containing one or more azo groups comprises by far the largest family of organic dyes. Prominent types of are acid dyes for polyamide and protein substrate such as nylon, wool and silk. Dispersed dyes for hydrophobic textile materials such as polyester and acetate material. Direct and reactive dyes for cellulosic textile material such as cotton, rayon, linen and paper. Generally the synthesis of azo dyes involves two steps. First step conversion of an aromatic amine to a diazo compounds is known as diazotization. Step 2 the reactions of diazo compounds with phenol, naphthol, aromatic amine or compound that has an active methylene group to produce the corresponding azo dyes. A process known as diazo coupling, this is the process called both diazo and pigments. Typical structure of colorants that fall into the two groups. Since the effectiveness of dyeing or printing process often hinges on the affinity between the dyes and the substrate. Dyes are designed with a specific substrate in mind. In this regard, dyes must be designed that you have greater affinity for the substrate than the medium usually water fastness from which it is applied. A high degree of performance under end use conditions. Forces involved in dyeing system with respect to the textile material. Electrostatic force, hydrogen bond, covalent bond formation, van der Waals force formation, physical forces, hydrophobic interactions or entropy factors. So, any of the following factors involved in with respect to the dye and fiber molecule arrangements. So, electrostatic forces, the forces have an range between the 100 Armstrong. The electrostatic force formed when the dye particle and fiber surfaces are oppositively charged. Such force exist in the dyeing of wool, silk, polyamides with anionic dyes. The polymers of these fibers contain amino and carboxyl groups depending upon the pH value in water. These groups are either neutral, cationic or anionic nature. Second one hydrogen bond formations with respect to the dye and fiber materials. When hydrogen atoms are united with a strongly electronegative group elements, the latter by attracting the electron of the hydrogen atoms gives to it positive bias. This positively charged hydrogen atom may form bond with groups containing unsorbed pair of electrons. They are of short range 1 Armstrong to 5 Armstrong. Hydrogen bonds are formed because of extra attraction between such atoms. It is a weak type of bond. This bond may be intramolecular or intermolecular. Coulomb bond. The Coulomb bond is the more strongest than other types of bonds. It is formed between the carbon atom in most organic compound is very stable. They are a short range 1 Armstrong to 5 Armstrong. Covalent bonds are formed when dyes react chemically with the fiber. All reactive dyes form covalent bonds. So, fastness properties of such dyes are generally good than other types of dye with respect to the textile material. Another one is the van der Waals forces. Van der Waals forces are only effective for sorption of dyes to fiber molecules. The distance between the dye and the fiber is very small. These are weak forces and they depend on atoms being at certain relative position. Physical forces this is generally formed based on the type of material with respect to the chemical nature in the dyes and the fiber like hydroxyl group, nitrile groups and azo groups and carbonyl groups might be responsible for attachment by hydrogen bonds to the fiber. But this explanation is to great extent discontinued because of coordinating power of these groups is satisfied by chelation within dye molecules which is due to nonpolar or physical forces. Hydrophobic interactions, it is found that increasing the number of aromatic rings or unbranched aliphatic chain makes a much greater increase in affinity than does the introduction of potential bond forming groups. This is assumed that hydrophobic part of unbranched aliphatic chain dissolved in water because of ice like structure of the water molecules in immediate vicinity of hydrophobic molecules which is of completely entropy factors. Dye and fiber interactions. So, dye fiber interaction system can be also divided into non ionic system, ionic system, reactive system, hydrogen bond system, other interactions. Non ionic system means it is the polyester, acrylic and polyamide with respect to the dyeing. Ionic systems fiber which possesses charged group anionic or cationic, acrylic fibers and basic dyes, wool, silk, nylon and acid dyes, fiber which contain no charged groups. Cellulose is dyed with direct 
and wet dyes both of which carry negative charges. The dye is absorbed by virtue of its attraction to the fiber and in doing so it is accompanied by the ions of electrolytes sodium chloride. Reactive systems cellulose wool with respect to the reactive dyes hydrogen bond systems and other interactions like van der Waals forces. Role of fibers functional groups in dye fiber interaction systems. So, cotton is the textile material. So, ionic system and the covalent bond forces and the hydrogen bond formations involved with respect to the any type of dyes. Cotton fiber has hydroxyl group which is highly electronegative and is capable of hydrogen bonding. It is also capable of reacting with reactive groups of reactive dye and form covalent bonds. Protein materials. So, ionic system. Wool fiber has carboxyl and amide groups which are capable of ionizing and at certain pH are positively or negatively charged. So, it can be dyed with basic or acid dyes. Polyester material contains carboxyl or hydroxyl as a functional groups, but do not undergo ionization. So, it is not possible to dye them with ionic dyes. Non ionic system and hydrophobic interactions and van der Waals forces exist. Polyacrylonitrile is so, an ionic and non ionic system contains OSO 3 H can be dyed with cationic or basic dyes. Rayon is ionic systems contain hydroxyl groups and acetyl groups. Dyeing mechanisms is the most important for dyeing the textile material with respect to the dyes. So, dyeing mechanisms involved is based on the affinity and substantivity. Affinity means it is a difference between the chemical potential of dye in its standard state in the fiber and the corresponding chemical potential in the dye bath that is tendency of dye to move from dye bath into a substance. It is expressed in joules and a quantitative expression of substantivity. So, substantivity is the attraction between a substrate and a dye or other substances under the precise conditions of test whereby the test is selectively extracted from the application medium of substrate. It is the qualitative expression of affinity. Substantivity depends on temperature, type of dye and type of fiber electrolyte concentrations substantivity of dyes have affinity and are soluble. Affinity of dyes for fibers as fibers vary considerably in chemical structure and as dyes too have different chemical groups that are characteristic of them. It can be easily understood that all dyes will not have the same affinity for all fibers. The dispersed dyes for example, have excellent affinity for the commonly dyed synthetic fibers like nylon, polyester and acrylic, but none for the cellulosic or protein fibers. Similarly, azoic and wet dyes are applicable only to the cellulosic fibers, but not to other common fibers. The following affinities of different dyes or different fibers on asterisk representation affinity and a blank space no affinity. Direct dyes. Direct dyes are mainly applied to cellulosic fiber such as cotton, viscose, cupromonium rayon, etc. The cellulose fibers have a good affinity and substantivity for direct dyes. So, they can be dyed directly from an aqueous solutions. Hence, these dyes are called direct cotton dyes. As these dyes have excellent substantivity for cellulose. They are also called substantive dyes. The direct dyes are attached to the fiber mainly by hydrogen bonding and van der Waals forces. The direct dyes have poor light and washing fastness, but they are used extensively due to their low cost and the simplicity of the dyeing process. Second one is reactive dyes. Since very strong covalent chemical linkage fix the dyes in fiber, these dyes are called reactive dyes. The reactive dyes are soluble in water and are predominantly applied to cellulose fiber. The dye fiber reactions takes place only when alkalis is added to the dye bath. A molecule of cellulose with cellulose like hydroxyl groups are reacted with the chlorine atom present in the reactive dyes. This formed the covalent bond with respect to the hydroxyl and chlorine form to re remove the chlorines and form the oxygen and hydroxyl groups to remove the hydrochloric acid. The application of these dyes to textile material like cotton two distinct steps are involved. Dyeing with the dye in the presence of common salt to effect as much exhaustion as possible. Chemically reacting the dye with the fiber in the presence of an alkali like sodas, caustic soda, sodium silicate. Reactive dyes are mostly applied to cellulosic fiber. They also dye silk and nylon. 
the reactive dye in general have good washing and light fastness due to covalent bond formations, but suffer from poor hydrochloride bleaching fastness. Wet dyes. Wet dyes are most important dyes for coloration of cotton and other cellulosic fiber. The washing, light, precipitation, rubbing, fastness properties of wet dyes are excellent. The wet dyes insoluble in water and have to dissolve by using sodium hydroxide and sodium hydrosulfide. Usually at 50 degree Celsius, the treatment lasting for 15 to 20 minutes. The solubilization process is referred to as wetting. In wetting process, the dye is reduced by the sodium hydrosulfide to the liquid compound of wet dyes, which in turn is converted into the water soluble sodium salt in the presence of sodium hydroxide. The solubilized dye is taken up by the fiber and then brought back to the insoluble state in the fiber by oxidation. So, this is mostly involved to gaining the fastness properties. The steps in dissolution of wet dyes, it is taken up by the fiber and reversion of the dye back to its insoluble form in the fiber can be listed as follows. Wet dye dispersion in water sodium hydrosulfide to form the liquid wet dyes. Then liquid wet dyes is reacted with the sodium hydroxide to form sodium salt of liquid wet dyes. Again sodium salt of liquid wet dyes is dissolved in aqueous bath to form the dye and fiber interactions. Finally, the absorbed liquid wet dyes is oxidized respect to the air oxidation or chemical oxidation to reback re into the insoluble wet dye in the textile material. Dispersed dyes. Dispersed dyes are non-ionic in nature, insoluble in water and relatively much smaller in size compared with other dye classes. These dyes are mechanically grown to a very small particle size and with the help of dispersing agent they can be dispersed in the dye bath. The dispersed dye were originally developed for cellulosic acetate fibers. The dispersed dye today are used to color the synthetic fiber like nylon, polyester and acrylic fiber. The dispersing dye polyester fiber is carried out at a high temperature like 135 degrees Celsius and high temperature processes. And the other, another methods thermosol process with respect to the 230 degrees Celsius temperature. Dispersed dyes in general have fairly good all round color fastness. So, another coloring methods are pigments. Pigments are insoluble in water they have no substantivity for any fiber and do not have any fiber reactive groups that can form chemical bonds with fibers. Pigment particles are much larger in molecule size compared with dyes. Therefore, they are not capable of penetrating fibers. They are held mechanically on the fiber surface by means of special chemicals dyes on the other hand are much smaller in size and therefore, they penetrate the fiber structure and get fixed inside the fiber as stated earlier. Pigments are capable of to all fibers, they are used to mostly in textile printing rather, rather than dyeing. Pigments have moderate to good fastness to wet treatment, they have been properly fixed to the substrate surface by binders. Reproducibility of sets of dyes and pigments, the sets of dyes should be reproducible when required certain dyes have affinity ability to overcome the factors like liquor ratio, pH temperature which affect the reproducibility characteristic of highly reproducible dyes are highly soluble, medium substantivity, medium reactivity, good washing properties, highly disposable. How to optimize the dyes with respect to the factors involved in the dyeing process? Substrate of the textile material, affinity with respect to the dye and fiber, circulation speed of the machines, action of chemicals before that is called as the axillaries, types of dye step, depth of shade in the prescribed material, optimum quantity yield with respect to the dye, diffusion ability and regularity of dyes, color fastness of the dyed material, combination and mixability of the dyes, chromophore percentage and axochrome percentage involved in the chemical nature of the dyes. Temperature regulations, the actual dyeing theory can be obtained mathematically from kinetics of dyeing or dyeing equilibria. So, dyeing equilibria is divided into three parts in the textile material. So, basically Langmuir isotherm and Friendlich isotherm and Nunn's isotherm. Langmuir isotherm is mostly involved in the protein fibers with respect to the acid and basic dyes and the Friendlich isotherms are mostly involved in the cellulosic material with respect to the direct dye reactive dyes or Nunn's isotherm is involved with respect to the polyester nylon material with dispersed dyes. I am going to conclude my topics. So, coloration of textile is basically involved with respect to the fiber, yarn and fabrics. 
uh, in hypothesis you are going to learn uh, i talk before so uh, dye and fiber interactions and uh, how the colors and uh, light is varying the color based on the human eyes and uh, how to uh, fix the dyes based on the chemical auxiliaries with respect to the interactions in the various uh, bonds taken place in the fiber and dyes so now you are uh, easily understand the how colorations involved in the textile materials thank you